Okay, this is um, our, the third session. We haven't finished the um, uh, power and the C phase. We are, we will, we are going to, to do it today, uh, uh, finalize yeah. the power and the C phase, and then jump to the, um, or start the transformer module. We're not going to finish the, the transformer module today. It's uh, because, we are going to start the assignment number one discussion. Like this, this uh, um, section. And then next time we are going to finish the transformer uh, and or, or module uh, number four. For assignment number one, I already uploaded the, the assignment questions. It's uh, three questions. We will go through it today. Uh, three questions. The last question is regarding the transformer. We can do it next week. Uh, the due date for the assignment to number one is in two weeks, uh, end of the day of uh, March 2nd. Okay. So, yeah, you like to start with the outline every time we have a meeting to make sure that we are following the, you know, the, the time. Okay. Let me make it on um, the full screen mode. Okay. We started uh, module number three, the power and the three phase. I will go really quick for the points that we covered last time and then start uh, with the normal speed with the ones that we 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 haven't finished last time. So for, for the three phase, the module number three, it's um, we we covered or uh, we discussed last time the time domain, as you can see for voltage or current, okay, and we moved from the time domain to the phasor domain at a certain frequency. Maybe like 60 hertz or 50 hertz. Um, we know like the difference or like the what is like um, I mean by phase shift between or angle between the voltage and the current. Okay, and then we we discuss the the phasor representation for um, whatever like it's a rectangular form x. And why or we put like J, we are using J with um, in the like it's related to the circuit analysis because we don't like to see the I, which is in old calculators. If you have the calculators now, you will see that um, they have the uh, uh, I instead of the J. This is the imaginary uh, part of the complex number. For the polar or rectangular, this is the phasor representation. We can go actually from one to the other. Let me activate the annotation. And, uh, we can, I can write something. So, here we have X and J, Y for the complex number in the rectangular form. Polar form, it's like magnitude and angle. You can go from the, the polar to the rectangular, okay? For example, the magnitude is the square root of x squared plus y squared, okay? And the angle is tan inverse or arc tan of uh, y over x. You can go from the, the uh, polar to the rectangular. Uh, it's here, like it's the magnitude, cosine the angle. This is the real part here, as you see, plus J, uh, the magnitude sine the angle. This is the imaginary part. Okay. So yes, we are going to use this. Uh, I'm not sure if we have some questions. Okay. 
yeah yeah it's uh regarding the exams it's as i said it's like case by case and uh, so it's um it depends actually on the 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 po so you have to go to the or to check with the po for your case you have to up, to apply of course send your application and they should provide you with the number of exams okay and the next we uh, solve it the um, three phase for using the phaser you for the circuit like simple circuit for example we have the resistor r uh, inductor sometimes we call it coil uh, most of the loads we have they have they are inductive loads so they have a kind of coils especially the motors so it's a j omega l and in case you have a capacitor it's minus j over omega c omega is the frequency we call it sometimes we call it the frequency uh, which is two pi times f sometimes it's it's just that the number beside the t the time here as you can see it's like 1000 okay we will have something like this in the exam so the c phase and the power is a question or a problem sometimes in the exam we moved from the time domain to the phasor okay and we started very important thing about the power we started with the single phase and then next we are going to cover the c phase for the single phase we we discussed the power uh, of course active power p in watts this is the instantaneous as we said it's function on the time it's the voltage uh, times the current we reach it to the proof that at the end the power for the single phase is voltage times the current and then there is a cosine phi okay this is we we call it like the power factor angle plus cosine 2 omega t minus phi and this is the part that uh, depends on the time they have double of the frequency of the main uh, supply or the circuit and we saw that um, that for the single phase we have average power it's the red line here and we have the instantaneous power here of course if you are you have the instantaneous power taking the average for a sinusoidal a sine or cosine it will give you this red line the average okay so the power for the single phase is not as a function of the time it's not constant it's not fixed at certain value it's actually oscillating or sometimes you call it like pulsating increasing and decreasing around a certain value the red one Okay. We discussed uh, the power factor, uh, power factor angle or cosine phi, it's the power factor. We uh, discussed uh, lagging and leading. We checked the current compared to the voltage. Okay. So if it's, um, let's say for this case, it's lagging, it comes after. We always assume the direction that it's um, counter or anti-clockwise okay in this direction so we have the voltage um, before the current or the current after so it's lagging in this case we have the current before the voltage so it's leading as we said like this is the case for the um, r and the l for the r this is l or omega l or j omega l if you want to include um, the, the complex or the imaginary number so for the r we have because i didn't include the r here it's the voltage and the current are in phase for the l the voltage or the current is lagging with exactly like 90 degree but if you have something in between r and l so the current will be something in between the 90 degree and the zero 
similar to that if you have R and C resistance and capacitor R and C, or you can call it like minus J over omega C. Okay. As you know, reactance in ohm instead of C infrared. So for this case, the R is similar to this one voltage and current in phase. For the capacitor, it's you have the voltage. Usually you take the voltage as a reference and the reference in the X axis. And then the current 90 degree leading. If you have R and C together, so you, the current will be between 90 degree, between the C and the uh, zero. Okay. And the angle, it depends on the value of the capacitor to the uh, resistance. If you have a very high resistance, it will be almost here. If you have a very high capacitor, so it will be something close to 90. So it's more capacitive than uh, resistive. Okay. And let's go to the power or the complex power first and then the, the power triangle. So for the complex power, this is very important. We have something called the um, complex or parent power. This is the S in volt amps. We have the real and active, active power. This is very common, the watt, P, and the active power in VAR, Q. So the relationship between the S and P and Q is this. S is complex, as we call it, the complex power. Okay. We use a complex number. For example, it, let's say like the S equal three plus J four. So the active power is P uh, is, is three and the active power is four. Active power and the active power are scalars, are just the values, numbers, three, four, okay? However, the S is complex. So let's say you have, for example, two powers, P1 and P2. You can add them. For example, three plus four, it will be seven watt. Similar with the reactive power, you can have, you know, three and five var, so it will be like eight var. Okay. However, if you have the S, S1 equals to one and S2 equals to two, let's say S3, the submission or the submission of S1 plus S2, uh, not equal to three. You have to consider the angle because the S is a vector or a complex number. So to add S1 and S2, you have to consider what is the angle and add them as a complex number. Okay. Maybe like in one chance it can it can give three if they have both they have the same angle, but this is not necessary. Okay. This is very important note because we will see now some of the exam problems after we finish this and uh, you will see that I, I'm going to get the active powers, add them together, the active power, add them together, and then at the end we get the S total as P total plus J Q total. Okay, but not adding that S for each load. Okay. And, uh, here we have, as I said, it's a complex number. So we have the conjugate. If it's uh, the vector or like the complex number. For some cases we use, when I use the S as a magnitude, I'm going to use the this sign just to show you that this is just the magnitude. Like I can say one volt amps, for example. So this is the, just the magnitude of the S, okay? As a magnitude of the S, it's equal to the magnitude of the voltage times the magnitude of the current. So magnitude of the S equals to the magnitude of the voltage times the magnitude of the current. 
But uh, if you have the S as a vector or a complex number, it's a V as a vector, again, magnitude and angle, and the current magnitude and angle, and don't forget the conjugate. We discussed the reason for the conjugate is that we want the reactive power in case of lagging power factor to be positive. And for the reactive power in leading power factor, the capacitor or capacitive load to be negative. Okay. Similar to the angle also, like it's positive and the, I'm talking about the power factor angle. Positive in the lagging, negative in the leading power factor. Okay. Okay, we finished all of this part last time and we had the power triangle. Uh, we discussed more on the, um, the angle phi and how to get the phi we have. We call this part as a power factor. Phi is the power factor angle. We can get it if you have the Q, P, or uh, the Q and magnitude of S. Okay. Or even if you have the Q and magnitude of the S, you can get the angle. So you only need two of them, and then you can calculate the angle. Okay. We will see the, the power triangle in many uh, of the problems for the three phase, especially they, uh, they include the part for the power factor correction. So the power factor correction is, it means you have a reactive power here consumed from the supply because it's inductive. So let's say you have a source, you have a load here connected together. The source is supplying active power P and the active power Q to this to your load. Because of the reactive power, the current here is higher and between your supply and your load, you have a transmission line, let's say, or a conductor or a wire. So you, the higher current, it will make a higher I square R and losses in your line. So to reduce this, we, can, we cannot reduce the active power because active power or real power is the actually, it's the power you need. But for the Q, the reactive, it's not, a real power, but it's still because you have a coil here or inductor, it's needed for your inductor. Okay, so one solution is to put, this is inductor L, I'm going to add C, a capacitor. Let's say you put a C that will give all the Q that is needed by the L. Now from your source, you will need no Q. So your current will reduce and the losses will be reduced. We call this, this one or this case as a power factor correction. And you have to choose the value for the capacitor to reach to this, um, what we call it like unity power factor. Unity power factor, it means like cosine phi equals to one unity power factor or the angle equals to zero. This is the case of the, if you remember the voltage and the current in phase, this is the case for the resistance. Because it's the resistance, so it's only absorb active power P from the source. All the reactive power will come from the capacitor to your inductor. This is very, very important um, thing in, in even in practical life. So, and we have a certain values here in Ontario, like for example, for the power factor, it, uh, for the load, it shouldn't go beyond 0.9. So 0.9 is your limit, 0.9 for the power factor. So cosine phi in Ontario is, limit is 0.9. You should be 0.9 or higher, closer to unity, between 0.9 to 1. Okay, if you have some motors and you consume more reactive power and your power factor is, let's say, 0.8, you have to put 
some capacitors to reach to the 0.9 or even to unity power factor. Okay. If you are not, like, let's say some people do use a very bad uh, power factor uh, because we, in Ontario, we, can, we uh, measure the active and reactive power for the industrial facilities. So if you pass this value, you are going to, to, to pay fines, okay, or penalties, we call it. Okay. I have a question. At which point yeah, sure, in yes, the um, at which point in the network do you put the capacitors uh, um, after the transformer or, or the switch gear? Yes, yeah, that is a good question. So let's say you have um, uh, usually for the industrial facilities, they have a transformer connected to the transmission line. And then this is your facility. Uh, I'm going to make it very simple. So I put like a load here. So this is like a factory, big one, maybe like three megawatts, okay? Or even more, like some, some of them like can reach to hundreds of megawatts. But they are consuming very high reactive power because, and it depends on the kind of motors they have. For example, the induction motors we will discuss uh, in, um, maybe like in module, I'm not sure the number of the module, but uh, later we will discuss the induction motors. They consume a lot of reactive power, Q. We put the capacitor in the low voltage here. So, and the size of this capacitor, it depends on, on your reactive power. And uh, it's, um, it's, it's not that simple because you know, the factory is not always at their maximum power. They don't, they have, for example, many uh, motors. They, are, they don't put all their motors or on at the same time. So I saw one of the problems uh, in Ontario, like in the grid, they have like one capacitor, for example, one capacitor bank for this big, mo like big uh, factory, and they turn it on even if they turn it very few motors. If you put, let's say, one motor and the others are off and you put a large capacitor, your um, facility, instead of, you know, taking zero from the source, it will actually give the source reactive power, which is bad. Now your, your source is, because you put like very, very large capacitor, now it's, it's even capacitive load. We don't like inductive load and we don't like the capacitive load too. We need the power factor to be close to unity or 0.9, I didn't say leading or lagging because it's bad for the both cases. We don't want to have like reactive power going from your load to the system. But with the, the location, based on the location, yes, it's the switch gear. And usually for um, the low voltage side, of the transformer. Sometimes the, I'm calling like low voltage side, it's um, maybe it's like medium voltage in reality, but it's like, uh, this is the, uh, I'm just, you know, referring to the uh, lower voltage side of the transformer. Okay. But this is a very um, practical, uh, maybe like issue in the power system. And sizing of the capacitor is, is important. Also, if you are changing the load, you have to change your capacitor. It should be, it depends on your load and how much you are consuming in the active power. And you try to reach to the zero uh, angle or unity power factor. Okay. Uh, I guess last time we discussed this one and we stopped here, I believe. And today let's continue and um, build on the, the power. We discussed the three phase power and we, we finished it. The three phase power, it's uh, similar with uh, some, you will see some, some of the different uh, equations, but it's, uh, it's basically the same concept. We use in the system, in reality, instead of using single phase, we use three phase. We will um, see 
the the reason behind this. But instead of having like one source, we will have actually it's one source, but uh, we split it into three and uh, for a reason again. Okay. For the power, the active power for the three phase, it's the three times the voltage. I will call it like P, it's for the phase, L for the line. So it's a three, P, uh, V, P, I, P, and cosine. I believe you remember this. It's the VI cosine, but I put like three times. We will discuss something called the, the line, or sometimes you get line to line. And instead of the three, you will see that we will use like square root three. Okay. And this is similar equation for the reactive power. Okay. I guess we have a question. Let me check the chat. Oh, I just create a, sent a link for everyone that wants to join a group for discussion uh, and solving the the exercise that we have in assignments. Not a question. Sure, and yeah. Then. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also I um I uh created the discussion, the questions uh, section in the discussion. Feel free to send any kind of problems. I, I um, regarding, of course, the power systems and machines. So I already uploaded all the exams and you can, you know, try to solve as much as possible. You can send your, uh, uh, maybe your trials uh, to me or even in the, and during the, in the website. And I'm going to uh, explain any of the question, okay? And yeah, thank you. So here I am, I'm not going, we will uh, discuss the why or sometimes we call it star connection uh, in, in details uh, later, but this is just, I, I put it here to show you the line and phase concept. So for the three phase, uh, we are lucky in the power systems and machines because we will use a balanced system. I mean by balanced system, they have uh, same magnitude. We said we have a three phase, right? We, for example, we can call them A, B, and C. Sometimes like one, two, three, you will see, or different uh, annotation. But at, at the end, there are three phases. They have a same magnitude. And the angle difference between them is 120 degrees, voltage and current. Okay. The, the normal sequence is A, B, C, or one, two, three. Okay, this is the normal sequence. They, they uh, move anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. So if you stay here, you will see A, B, C, or one, two, three. Okay, I use this one just to show you like the, 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 the connection. For example, here one source, this is a source, maybe like a generator. They have uh, voltages VA, VB, and VC, and the currents IA, IB, IC. You can treat each one of them as um, one single phase, Okay, separate single phase. And this is VA here is the V phase or VP as we said there. And this is the current. And instead of like using the, the phase, we can use the voltage between the phases, not between the phase and this point. We call it like the neutral point, not the voltage here, but I'm going to use the voltage between two phases. This voltage, we call it the line or the voltage line to line, okay? We will see like uh, in few slides, the difference between them as um, in magnitude and angle. Okay. You already saw that the difference in the magnitude uh, in the power, there is a square root three, but you will see in the angle that there is also like 30 degrees, okay? But, but we are going to discuss it in details. This is just the, the reason behind this one to, to, to give you idea what is the phase voltage 
similar to VA and the uh, phase uh, or sorry line or line to line voltage here. Okay. The three phase system in time domain, uh, we are going to use the phasor domain, but uh, this is just to show you the, um, you know, the waveforms or the time domain. So let's say like this is VA, VB, and VC. You can see each one of them comes after 120 degrees and this one 240 degrees. They are balanced, same magnitude, okay, all of them and shifted by 120 degrees each, okay? And yes, so what you just saw the waveform, let's write the equations for both voltage and currents. I'm going to use also the um, uh, root mean square values. So instead of using I maximum, I'm going to write it as a square root three in the IP, because this, this one is the one we are going to use as we did in the single phase. So uh, currents, voltages, A, B, C, you can see it's exactly the same like this. The only difference between A and B and C is the angle, similar to the voltage. Okay, they are using the same magnitude. Let's drive the um, power. I so have, we a, have, three I have a question. Sorry. Yes. You yes, said that the yeah, square root three in the formula because I'm seeing square root two. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Like this one is for the um, uh, root mean square. It's not the line and phase. Okay. Uh, so this is the current, the phase current. But um, uh, as we discussed last time, we have something called the peak or the maximum, but uh, we don't use this in the power. We use something called the, the I root mean square. And the difference between the I root mean square and the maximum, we can, we can say the I maximum or the peak is for the sinusoidal, is the square root two of the I R M S, the root mean square. This is only for the sinusoidal waveforms. Okay, for the sinusoidal waveform. And where is the, the IM? IM is here. This is the IM. But instead of using the maximum or the peak, we are going to use something called the root mean square. And the reason, um, I, I, I will show you the, uh, the slide, but if you remember when you use the maximum, we saw that the, the power was something like this in the single phase. So to get rid of the, the two, here, we move to the root mean square. So it's it's I R M S or V R M S R M M R I R M S and cosine the angle. Just to to get rid of the over two, and we are going to use it uh, actually here, and in the exam all the values will be in the R M S. So you will use it directly. You are not going to use the square root two to move from the peak and maximum to the root mean square. Okay. This is just like here, we just do it because I was in the with, uh, with form uh, or the time domain. And for the time domain, usually we put like the I maximum and then sine or cosine omega T plus the angle or minus the angle. Okay. Um, uh, so I have a question that is IP is the R IRMS? Uh, this one, yes. The, this this current in the, R, the RMS value, yes. And uh, if you multiply the RMS value times the square root two, this will be the maximum IM or the peak. Sometimes you call it like the peak current. Okay. I don't use the peak because we use the P here for the phase. But yeah, like it's instead of using the peak, let's say it's either IM. IM is if you have a sine waveform, it's the current here. This is IM. This is the maximum value for it can reach during the time domain. This is the time, and this is the current as a function on the time. 
what we will use in even in reality, we use only the RMS values. We don't use the peak because the peak is just, uh, you know, at one moment, the current reached to this value, but it's not like a real value if you want to see the impact, for example, for your current. So all we will study is the RMS, even in, in reality. When I say like um, voltage in reality, like we have a transmission line and the voltage is 500 kV. This is the voltage in RMS value. We don't use the peak. If you want to get the peak, because it's a sinusoidal, I can multiply the 500 times the square root 2. This is a kilovolt, of course, and this is the uh, maximum or the peak, or we call it I VM. But in reality, we use only the root mean square value. Even the, in the problems, we will use all in RMS values. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. And I can show you what when I did this uh, in the um, sorry in the. Um, if you remember from the, uh, the oh sorry uh, uh, yeah here uh, remember the RMS and this is the reason behind the using of the RMS. If you look at the end of the uh, single phase, it was half VM IM uh, cosine phi. So I remove the half and it will be, but in root mean square uh, V root mean square I root mean square cosine phi. Okay. Then we have, um, okay, we multiply, sorry, the currents and the voltage, similar to what we did last time to get the P, the active power for the each phase. Remember we had the sine times the sine or last time the cosine times the cosine. We can have this rule for the multiplication of the sine uh, times the sine. sine uh, alpha times si uh, times sine beta, it's half cosine the difference minus cosine the submission. Okay. After adding the power for the three phase, it's the submission, right? It's the power of the entire system. It's the power of phase A plus phase B plus phase C. Add them and each multiplication between the two signs, like here, you can do or use this uh, function. At the end, you reach to this value, okay, or this equation. So for this equation, there is something very important and we should do like a comparison between this and um, a single phase. So we found cosine here to omega, of course, it's the double frequency similar to the single phase but we have like three components. Each of them are separated by a like a angle, a certain angle. One is like minus 240 and the other one is plus 240 degrees. Okay. So the submission for this, like the three components are zero. And uh, there is a reason for, for this. So, in the, as I said, like about the balanced circuit, if you have a balanced circuit, equal magnitude and the angle is 120 degrees. I should complete this uh, information by saying, if you add the three phase balanced currents or voltages all together, the submission equals to zero. And this is something in them, even in the vectors, right? You have three vectors, they are shifted by uh, same angle, 120 degrees, and they have the same magnitude, then the submission for them is zero. And this is exactly what I did here. There are three components shifted by 120 degrees, and uh, they are uh, same magnitude too. Like they have one here, one here, one here. So submission is zero. Because this submission is zero, the, act, the, the power for the three phase equals to the three times the voltage of the phase, current of the phase, cosine phi. This is the proof. 
one important uh, yes yeah we have a question I, I mean, I mean, this is this is probably very elementary but is this in any way similar to like the kvl rule where the voltages within a loop add up to zero is it is there any sort of connection this one yeah no it's um uh, the three phase or, uh, yeah. or which one or you are talking yeah for the three phase the vectors uh, you can um and uh, I advise you to use the calculator even. You can check. Let's say you have one angle zero plus, and this is in, in the uh, math, one angle 120 degrees plus one and angle 240 degrees. You can check this one. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, I can, I can do it like one. Uh, cosine zero is uh, one and sine is... Um, uh, sine zero is zero. Here I will put plus one cosine uh, 120 degrees plus one J uh, sine 120 degrees. Okay, and then plus one cosine 240 degrees uh, plus J or one, of course, J sine 240 degrees. If you did this, it's it will give you like a zero. And uh, any balanced system, it's not just it no, it's not just the three phase. Let's say you have two vectors, they are at the opposite to each other, they have the same magnitude, okay, and shifted 120 degrees, the submission is zero. They cancel each other. If you have um, let's say six phases, not just the three phases, like six phases, but they have the same magnitude and uh, they had shifted equally, uh, 60 degrees each, then you will have zero, the submission. But the uh, idea, they must be balanced. Balanced, it means they have the same magnitude and they should be like equally, uh, or the, the total angle, the 360 degrees are equally divided between them. For example, here it's 120, here is 60. Okay, or any anyone, like if you have two, so, so uh, 360 degrees over two, so it's 180 degrees. If you have four, let's say you have four, if you have four vectors and they are equal and uh, 90 degrees because 360 divided by four, it's a, then the submission will be zero. Okay, it's uh, the vector analysis for the, uh, uh, so it's it's not something related to the um, uh, circuits or the uh, power systems. It's related to the vector, like the vector analysis, how to add two vectors together, for example. Okay. Okay. One important note before I go related to the three phase compared to the single phase it's uh, the power here is just it's a function of the time they don't have the if you remember the single phase the double frequency part because they don't, they don't have the double frequency it means the power in the three phase they are only a fixed number there is no uh remember what i said in the first of this um you know um, a session or the the slides it's it's not oscillating similar to or pulsating similar to the single phase you only have this one even the time domain is equal to the average it's not changing by the time similar to the single phase so three phase power is better than the single phase power because the power is constant all the time not changing by the double of the frequency okay and uh, for the complex power uh, we discussed this one i i um I explained it in the power triangle, but we can go through it very fast because this is for the three phase. So what is the difference between the single phase that we discussed and the three phase? So let's assume that we have the voltage 
in phase, angle zero. So this is the voltage in phase. You have the current in phase. This is the current in phase and the angle is minus uh, P. So minus in this direction and positive in the opposite direction. And the, the power will be exactly the same, but we will add three for the phases and the conjugate again. However, if you go to the line, you will have square root three and similar like e equation. Same for the uh, phasor form, okay? Okay, polar first, and then to the rectangular form, the P and Q for the three phases. So it will be like this. So the P is three V uh, phase, I phase cosine phi, and for the Q, it's a three V phase, I phase uh, sine phi. I just put like three for the phase and for the line, I put like instead of three, square root three. We are going to discuss the Y or the star and what is the meaning of the square root three and the reason for the square root three. And again, it's, it's more of like vector analysis than uh, circuits. We discussed this, the Y and the star. So we have the voltage, okay? Here is the line, uh, sorry, the, the phase between the neutral to A. Between line and another line, we call it VAB, okay? So can I get like the VAB? What is the VAB compared to VA? If you make a KCL here, the VAB, it's the VA minus the VB. And we wrote it here. So the voltage here between the two points here, making KVL for this, it's the voltage A minus B. And you can do any other, for example, between here, so you will have two sources, one positive and one negative, or between A and C. So you have between them one positive and one negative. So any line or line to line voltage, it's one of the line minus the other one. So let's put it like in the, what I call it here, the phasor diagram. We always put the phase voltage as a zero, angle zero here, and then shifted by 120 degrees in negative, it's the B, and in the positive is the C. This is the black one, right? The black one is the phase voltages. I want to get VAB. VAB, it's the VA, which is the one we have it here, minus VB. Minus VB, I have VB. The minus, I will put the other side. This one is minus VB. Can I add both like VA and VAB? In the vector analysis, I have to, I started from this point to this, this is A. I want to add minus VB, B, so I will move it in, in parallel here parallel to it, and this one minus VB. Then VAB minus V, sorry, VA minus VB, the submission is from the start to the last point. This is the one. This angle is 60 degrees, and the red line is split it into half, so 30 and 30. So there is a, between V, a, B, and V, A, or the reference, there is a 30 degrees. By the vector analysis, if you, you are doing it on, on a scale, you will find that the V, A, B is longer by square root three that, than the phase or the V, A. So there is a square root three and angled 30 degrees from V, A. 
And this is the reason between the line or line to line voltage and the phase, it's the square root three. There is a shift in the angle by 30 degrees. But for the power, we, we like, because we, um, all we care is the magnitude. What would change it is the magnitude, not the, not the angle. The angle is the angle between the voltage minus the current. So the power factor angle is the one for the voltage. For example, if you are doing phase A, so it's the phase A minus V phase, B, phase A. Or if you are doing it in B or C, it will be the similar. So we don't care much about the angle. We care a lot about the magnitude. Okay. For the star, you will find something important. The line current is equal to the, the phase uh, current. Uh, to show you what is what I mean by the phase current, this is the current. The current here equals to the current in A. It's the same current. So line and phase are equal. Okay. For the delta, uh, it's uh, similar. Uh, the delta connection, we call this, this connection as delta. As you can see, they are connected like in a triangle, okay, between each of the phases. There is no neutral point here. I believe we have the details here on the next page or next slide. So we have, it's exactly the same, except we are going to make like a swap between the current and the voltage. Let's see the line and phase voltage. You will find something interesting for the voltage. Can you see the voltage in the line or line to line? It's equal to the voltage of the phase. However, the current of the line different than the current in the phase. By the way, the current in the phase here, we call it IAB because it's, uh, it's uh, this part is, we call it like the phase. Here we call it the line. So for example, it's exactly the same. For example, IA, it will be ICA minus IBA using KCL at this point. And do the math, it will be exactly the same. At the end, the voltage line equals to the voltage phase. However, the current is shifted by 30 degrees and the angle, uh, sorry, and the magnitude is the square root three. This is the mean difference. Okay. Any question for the... Um... Delta and star and the connection between the delta and star. Okay. So one last thing maybe before we take the break next. So the, um, it's regarding the um, uh, star or delta. We can use the same equations for the power. So for star or Y, I'm, I'm, I can call it star or sometimes Y. So the phase current, line current are equal. And uh, for the delta, the voltage uh, phase and line are equal. For the star, the voltage is different than the line. So you, multiply, you, you divide by square root three. As I told you, we only care about the magnitude. So this is the only the magnitude. Okay, and here also the magnitude. For the current and the delta, it's different as a magnitude. When you multiply, get the power, the power is the C phase, is the voltage phase, I phase, cosine. Similar, of course, for the uh, delta, three, V phase, I phase, cosine, uh, theta or cosine, sorry, phi. If you use or the VP and the IP from the delta and star, you will get the exact same equation. It's instead of 
three in the phase, you will use the square root three and use the line values. And that's it. So it's exactly the same. Okay, we will use the same equation. If you have the phase values, use this. If you have the line, delta or star, we are going to use this. Okay. Any question so far? And let's continue in the full screen. So we got the three phase power um, balanced system. All we have in this course is balanced system. So don't worry. Uh, here I put something to show you like a kind of the problems that you can see for the three phase power okay or like three phase circuits so for this example they provide you with um, supply and the load the source and the supply as you can see it's in star or y connection uh, balance it same magnitude phase shift between a and b and c is 120 degrees load is again it's a balanced or are equal and they connected in delta Okay, so I put this one for a reason, is how to solve this one. We have steps to follow in case you have um, this, the, the three phase circuit. So first point, they, you will find that uh, um, it's, uh, the, the supply or the load can be, Y or delta, the first point is to convert everything to Y, okay? Uh, and the reason for that is to have the neutral point. So everything, if you have load, okay, and delta, it must go to star. Similar for the um, source too. It's uh, load or source, all to uh, star or Y. I, I call it like, you know, both are fine, star or Y. So all delta loads or source to Y. And then you, we connect all the neutral conductors or points or nodes all together for the loads, so sources. Okay. And then so this is number one, number two, and three is to split the circuit into three equal single phase equivalents. So actually we are going to use like a one phase and solve and then move back to, or try to combine or solve the circuit first as a single phase, and then try to combine the solution for the three phase. Okay. So once we have a single phase, for example, a source and the load, let's say like something like this uh, V, and this is like, let's say the impedance, you can calculate the current, you can calculate the power and everything. And then move from the three phase, for the, from the single phase to the three phase, back from the single phase to the three phase. For example, if you have, you want to the power of the three phase, you will multiply the power of the single phase Okay, by three. This is the power for the single phase. Sometimes you call it like this, like one phi, it's a like single phase. Three phi, it's like the three phase. So the power uh, P or Q, reactive power, also you multiply by three. Uh, if you want to the voltage and current in phase, it's the same values. If you want to the line, you have to multiply by square root three. And that's it. So you will solve. We are not going to solve the three phase as a three phase, but we will move to single phase, solve it, and then back to um, the three phase. 
I am going to show you one of the problems. Uh, but before that, so let's go between the delta star or delta y connections for the load. To move from, let's start by delta to star. To move from the delta to star, uh, general equations are, you want to get the, this impedance in the star. You have the delta, you have this. You want to go to this. So first you have the impedance of the A. You multiply this times this divided by the submission of all three impedances in the delta. This is the equation, the general equation, okay? You multiply this times this and then divided by the submission. If you want to impedance B and C, it's the same. B is this times this divided by the submission. I told you before that we have a, only a balanced circuits. So we are lucky. All the impedances will be equal. So the impedance of the, the Y is the impedance of the delta. Okay, one of the delta, all are equal, divided by three. Usually the, the Y or the star, they have, um, uh, or not usually, like always, they have less impedance compared to the delta. You divide by three, that's it. Similar to that from uh, star or Y to delta. Okay, we have the general equation. Okay. If you we have we have this and we want to go to the delta. So for example, this between A and B, the impedance Z A B. So it's the impedance of the A for the star plus the B plus A times B over or divided by the impedance C. This is the general equation. However, we are not going to use the general equations because we have balanced circuit or the impedances are equal. So the impedance of the delta is higher than the star by three times. Okay. So this is this is the one that we are going to use in the uh, all the problems in the exam. Let's take one one uh, quick problem uh, just to show you exactly what what you are going to do. So we have this is the source connected to a supply, and this is very close to what uh, we had in the exam. So you have a source, you have a delta store delta sorry delta um, load, and usually have something in between. Here we call it like ZL, it's the line. You have a transmission line, right? Between your source and your load. How to move from the single phase to uh, the three phase to solve. First point is to move this impedance to from delta to star. Okay, this is the point that a neutral point. This is delta. So it's delta is always high. So star to go to the star, you divide it by three. Once you have the neutral point, you connect the neutral point to the neutral point of the source. If you have multiple source or multiple loads, all should be on in, in the star connection and you connect the, all the neutrals. Okay. And we are going to take one of the phase here. Usually it's phase A, but I, I'm just, you know, showing you a single phase and then we can, we can solve. Usually it's phase A because phase A is always with the angle zero and it's better for the solution like for the, you know, it will be much easier. You will put one of the ZL here. This is ZL and you will put or the, your, your impedance of the star, which is the one for the delta divided by three. It will be a very, very simple circuit. 
source in AC, of course, magnitude and angle, 120, angle zero. Impedance L, this is the one. Impedance Y, this is the one divided by three. You can get the currents, sorry, currents, you can get the power, okay? Current, the current here is the, this voltage divided by the impedance. If you want to the power, for example, the power losses at the transmission line, because this is actually one of the equation, like the problems in the exam. So this is the transmission line, right? The power losses is the power here at this R. And you get you got already the current. So to get the power, power for the resistance of the transmission line. Usually for the resistance, it's uh, VI. There is no cosine V, right, for the resistance. Or some, sometimes we call I square R. Or if you have the voltage across the R, so it's V square over R. All the voltages here are magnitude and currents are magnitude only because it's just the resistance. Usually for the losses, okay, we use this if we have the current, which is our case. So you multiply I square R. This is the power losses at the transmission line at one phase. And don't forget to multiply it three times because you have three uh, phases. That's it. It was a one one problem in the previous exams. Okay. You can see, I believe the next slides um, are the um, steps. As you can see, we move this, the uh, star, sorry, the delta to Y star. And then we connected the neutral and then we solve it for phase A. That's it, it's a single phase, phase A. Uh, it should be very easy, okay? And uh, try to use your calculator, try to train yourself for the calculator to make sure that you have, um, you know, the skills and it's easy for you. Oh, yes, please, uh, my question. Hey, Mohammed, it's draw again. Um, so when, when it gives you this type of examples, um, probably th this is my this is my difficult. I cannot tell uh, talk for my friends, but it looks maybe easy in your eyes because you do this quite a lot. But um, if you don't go step by step for me, it's a little bit complicated for me to go over and redo by myself. Yeah, I agree. Of course, I agree. So, so it's, is it possible? You, you like, see it difficult now. In, Sorry, in, yeah, go ahead. In, in the question, like the past paper question that you submitted, you submitted a detailed step by step answer. Maybe that is um, a better way of, of showing the steps in a more permanent form. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. and uh, yes, I agree, of course, with you. It's, um, uh, you can see the problems now difficult because maybe you, you see it after a long time from like graduating from the school. And I know like this is like um, the basics. What we are we are doing now is the basics and most of you, you know, we don't use the basics a lot in, in the practical life, but uh, don't worry, we have enough solved problems to go through. Maybe I, I, I can say 100% of course of the past exams and most likely I would say like 80 to 90% of the PO exam. So because as I said, they repeat the ideas. Some cases they repeat the entire exam like 100%. Sometimes they repeat 90% maximum, like the worst case scenario, they repeat the same idea for 80% of the exam. So it's like one question. It's, uh, you know, like they put like, it's of course, 
related to what you will study. It's not like completely outside, but they put like they try to say, OK, let's test them on something that is more advanced than the basics or something. This this uh, I'm, I'm talking about the, my my experience since uh, 2015. So it's um, and uh, a couple of exams, except, of course, the COVID time and they canceled the exam. But it's uh, it it should be you you will have to definitely train yourself and you have to study how to solve the problem. So I'm going to upload the the prop the questions. I'm going to solve certain problems. I I chose them them on a list to cover all the ideas. But feel free to send me your trial at any problem. Uh, as we did in the magnetic circuit, I I already like solved one of the previous exam just after the module. It's it's not covering hundred percent of the magnetic circuits. I have a a couple of problems that I will solve with you, okay. But you can like after like solving like three four ideas of the magnetic circuit, you should be able to solve any new. A problem that you will see in the previous exams. You will find that they are repeating the ideas or you will use half of them. Um, assignments one and two also is part of the trainings. I'm going today, I'm going to solve the um, uh, assignment number one with you step by step. All the, the, the assignments, uh, midterm, final exam, all, all of them are when, like uh, all the problems are from the previous exams. So I'm not going to maybe like put new things, but I'm using the previous exams just as a, like training. So we are going to solve a, uh, assignment number one today, or at least like uh, show you the steps for assignment one. The idea for assignment number one, especially number one, because we have two assignments, is to start to practice yourself the problems. Because you have to solve it by yourself. You have to set the time. Time also is one issue in the exam. You have to be able to solve the problem in almost 35 minutes. 35 minutes. Don't take more time because otherwise it, it's going to impact the other problems or questions in the exam. Okay? But don't, don't like... Um, Maybe like uh, scared out once you see the the problems for the first time. This is the first time we I show you this, and actually like the the um, for this problem for this example, the idea is to show you okay like this is the steps that we are going to follow to solve the problems. It's not a problem. Even even you 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 look here. I don't have any solution at the end. Like it's done, like it's not a complete uh, uh, solved problem. But I just uh, maybe give you like idea what we are going to see. Because once I, I'm going to solve the problem, you will uh, understand the big idea for um, the, the question and the problem. You know that why you are doing this steps. Okay, it's, in, it's already on the slides. We have the steps we have to follow. Like this is one one uh, of the, and again, the ideas are repeated many times in the exams. And they put to, like I, I already uploaded more than uh, maybe like 15 years of the previous exams to show you that uh, it's not going to change a lot from one year to another. Even the change, you will see that the changes but it's not that significant. If you understand one, you should, because they may, and it happened multiple times, they, they repeated the same problem with the same numbers too. The same knowledge question with the same, you know, wordings. But this is not guaranteed. Like sometimes they put different numbers, different uh, shape, but it's, it should be the same idea. Like it's, the main thing is you will have the enough uh, experience to solve, like you know, similar. Let's say similar uh, 
not exact, not not uh, necessarily like to be exact, but in some like some cases, I will show you that they put the same exact uh, questions, even with the numbers. Okay, but uh, don't fear the this. Uh, I I because based on my previous experience, like uh, I saw the grades for many people, it's easy to get 90. It's easy to get over 90 actually for this exam. Like it's uh, manageable. But of course you need to practice. Like I, you have to practice. If you have time, you can even look at the textbook. So this is, it will be, because I saw a case when uh, someone got 99, but I saw he was very dedicated for this course. He was very dedicated for the course. Like he, he got the textbook, he was reading before even the lecture. So he was, and he got 99. So it's almost like a hundred. I don't know what, what he missed in the exam, but it's, uh, it's, uh, uh it can easily uh, happen. Not like, uh, Impossible. Over 90 is very, very manageable. Like it's very manageable. Okay. Okay, let's um, continue. And this one, for example, the one we have about the advantage of the three phase over the single phase, it's one of the knowledge uh, question in the exam. He said, why we are using the three phase? Why not the single phase? So it's one one of the, the problems. I put it in details here. I have a lot of uh, knowledge questions. I will upload them to uh, one by one. Like I'm not going to put you like a hundred questions uh, all together. It will be a lot, but uh, I will put them gradually. But for example, here, why we are using the three phase over the single phase. So if you have, Three phase system. Let's let's connect them as a star connected to a load here. Let's say the load is a star again. Okay. And the single phase, and for the single phase, you are actually you have three single phase. So because it's a similar to similar power, you want to transfer the same for the same load, similar power. You will need less conductors, for example, here three, or even if you're using the neutral, it will be four. Here you have six conductors. So it's less conductors. Less conductors means two things. It's less losses and it's actually less, less money because it's more economical. Okay. And the less conductor, it means less size for the generators, okay? Less weight for the uh, generator too, compared to the three single phases, like one, two, and three. One important thing that we are going to study, especially in the synchronous uh, machine and induction mo motors, the self-starting. Self-starting, it means in the three phase, Every 120, sorry, 120 degrees is not accurate. It should be something here. Uh, every 120 degrees, you, you see a one phase is coming, right? Every 120 degrees. For the single phase, we call the tour or the, they are, it goes to from zero to maximum and then to zero to maximum in the opposite direction and so on. So this one, we call the single phase is pulsating kind of tour. However, the three phase, because once this voltage, let's say like voltage A is, is at the peak and going down, you will find another voltage is coming up. Once this one is going down, you will find another one. So we call this one as rotating magnetic field. This one is pulsating, it goes to, Maximum, then zero, complete zero, and then maximum in the opposite direction, and then zero. So a good thing regarding the rotating uh, magnetic field or, or, or voltage induced, 
it will make the motor to be self-starting. Okay, single phase, it's not self-starting. And the magnetic field for the single phase is called the pulsating. Pulsating, it means it increases and decreases, increases and decreases from uh, zero to maximum to zero to maximum and so on. One thing that we cover today is regarding the power. If you remember single phase, okay, you have the instantaneous power. It has the double frequency uh, one in a time domain. So it's, it's making vibration actually for the motors. So single phase motors, they have a noise and you will see that they are not rotating in, you know, uh, uniform and smooth kind of uh, rotation compared to the three phase, which has uh, the uniform and constant and fixed instantaneous power. And there is no oscillations double the frequency like the single phase. Okay. So we can, uh, I already have this uh, problem, oh, sorry, this knowledge question uh, written in a good way. Like I, I know in this slide, it's uh, again, it's just for explaining the things, but of course for the slides, it's not the main, um, the main target for the slides is to prepare for the, the the exam. It's just to give you like the main ideas, okay? Last the section here for the C phase and we, uh, this one is important is, uh, any question before I go here? Are you? All good, or do you have any question? Because I will jump to very, very important one, not in the textbook, but in the exams. So, and it's very common actually in the exams. We will solve uh, one problem today regarding the watt meter, yeah, or the two watt meter method. Let's let's start. Like why we have the uh, this part? It's we have meters in the power system to measure, for example, something called the ammeter. We connect it in series to to get the current. We have something called the voltmeter. We connect it to in parallel, not in series, but in parallel to measure the voltage. We have something called the watt meter to measure the watt or the active power. And it's connected, it's similar to the ammeter with the voltmeter because for the power, to measure the power, you need both the voltage and the current, right? So the watt meter or watt hour meter, as they are written here. So you have something called the current coil. This is similar to the ammeter and something called the voltage coil. This is similar to the voltmeter connected in parallel to measure the power. This wattmeter is to measure the power in phase A. You can calculate the current of phase A and you can calculate the voltage of phase A, okay? And then they are designed, the wattmeter to measure the VA Ia and the cosine of the angle between them. I can say phi or say the one for the voltage A minus the one for the current A, so the current A. Okay, this is the watt meter. And this is the, you know, the symbol for the watt meter. You put, you put it between two things. It's measuring the voltage between the two points here because this is the voltage coil. You put the current coil, in series, so it measures the current. Okay. So if you want to measure the power for the three phase, it's a three phase. So you need three watt meters, each for each phase. Okay, and it's very simple. If your system is 
uh, balance it as you as we have here, you can get the power for one phase, for example, phase A, and multiply by three for the three phases. They are all balanced. They are they have they are exactly the same, same power divided for the three. So the power for one phase multiplied by three, it will give the power for the three phase. Okay. There is another thing. If you have unbalanced systems, then you have to use, you know, as you, as we said, three watt meters for the three phases. But they found another method called the two watt meter method, which can help to calculate the power for the unbalanced system or balanced system using only two watt meters. So you are going to save one of the what meters? Okay. This one is applicable only if you have a three wire star, of course, or delta, whatever balanced or unbalanced. However, for the wire systems, for wire systems, for the star, and if it's unbalanced, then you cannot use the two watt meter method. And to explain this, let me show you the um, watt meter method here for the different systems. Let's assume all the systems are under unbalanced here. Okay. We have this, we call it the, star, the Y or star. This is the delta. And this is again, Y or star. Here we have one, two, three. This one, we call it three wire system. This one, we have one, two, three, four, because there is a one in the neutral connected. So we call this one as four wire. If all of them are unbalanced, we can use the two watt meter method for the star, three wire, balanced or unbalanced, doesn't matter. For the delta, we can use the two watt meter method. That's okay. For the four wire star, if it's uh, unbalanced, then we have to use the three watt meters. We can't use the two watt meter. It's not applicable here. And there is a reason for that. Like it's uh, to, to show you what, why we, are, we can use the two watt meter method even for the unbalanced system. I can give you like a proof, but it's not it's not it. Uh, needed for the exam, but just to explain the things. For example, let's let's start here and let's call this one A, B, and C instead of one, two, three. The first watt meter is measuring the current IA. Second one is I, B. Voltage here is V, A, C. Voltage here is V, B, C. Let's assume like a resistive loads. So it's easier. I'm not going to use the cosine. So the power of the watt meter one plus watt meter two equals two. Parent time voltage for both of them. So it's a VAC times IA plus VBC times IB. IC, sorry, VAC equals VA minus VC. VBC is VB minus VC times IB. So equal, let's say VA times IA, and let's say here VB times IB, okay? And then we have plus VC multiplied by minus IA and then minus IB, right? Use KCL at this point. It's IA plus IC plus IB 
the summation of the three currents equals to zero. So I A plus I B plus I C equals to zero, KCL. So I C actually equals to I B, sorry, minus I B minus I A. So if you use this one, you will put I C here. So at the end, the power of the two watt meters, it's V A I A plus V B I B plus V C and this one is I C. This is the power of the three phases A, B and C. What is the assumption here? The assumption that I used is the summation of the currents equals to zero. Whatever this, the for both cases here, this and this one, the summation of the currents are zero. Whatever the system is balanced or unbalanced, it doesn't matter. KCL at this point or KCL here, all currents are entering here, so the submission is zero. However, if you have four wires, you cannot say KCL here equals to zero because if they are unbalanced, then you will have a current here. And this equation is not valid anymore. It will be equal to the neutral current, the current in the neutral. Okay. So this method is valid for all the systems, balanced or unbalanced, except the four wire and unbalanced case. Okay. Any question so far? We are done module number three, the three phase and uh, the power. And as I promised, we should take one of the, if you have any question, one of the, last exam problems. I already uploaded the second one for the solution of the past exams in the our website that works. So feel free to check the, and they're going to, to upload more and full exams. Like I will uh, solve it full, full of the past exams, the complete exams. Okay. Any questions so far before we start uh, this problem? Okay, if we, no, no questions, uh, let's, well, yes, the, yes, please. Yeah. Question. Uh, there yes, are please. many past exams in the, the website, right? I do talk about yes. the solutions because the solutions, uh, I can see just one, the, just two and the assignments. Or two. Yes, two. I upload. I um, I published one, and after this session, I'm going to publish another one. Okay, and I will put like other solved, uh, um, complete exams. Like it's not just the uh, exams, but I put like the solutions under the past exam solution uh, module or section in the website. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The 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 document that you you are showing is the the solution, right? The solution, the path yes. exam one. Yes, number one. Yes, this one was uploaded, uh, I believe, like a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, it's it's already there, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, no worries. And the one thing I used to, at the beginning, I used to put the, the um, problem, but then you will find only the solution because you have the exams and I will just put the uh, number of the exam, the year and uh, May or, or spring or fall and uh, December, for example. Okay, just to save, to save, you know, uh, to save uh, some of the, um, uh, make, make the file, even the size of the file is, is much uh, lower much smaller. Okay, for this question, 
uh, it's question I was, it, it was question one, 2014, three phase power. You have three phases, A, B, and C loads, load A, load B, and load C. Two watt meters, you can see W1 and W2, and you can see between which current they are uh, measuring and which voltages. Let's look at the um, given. So given load A, of course, it's a three phase. All the loads are three phases. Heating and giving the active power and unity power factor. The um, uh, load B, it's uh, given the uh, power, active power in horsepower, induction motor, and the power factor, 0. 0.65. Okay. And then C, giving the magnitude of the S and the Q or the reactive power. Okay, so for this one, how to solve, I usually use like a technique to solve this kind of questions. It's a problem for the three phase and now we verified it's a, a three phase, very common in the past exams. So usually we have four quantities, the active power, reactive power, magnitude of the S and the power factor angle or the phi. Okay, the power factor angle, it's the angle between the voltage uh, and the current. And uh, cosine of this angle is the power factor. You have the four things. For any kind of loads, they are going to give you like two of them. And given two, you can calculate the other two. For example, the first one, giving the power, active power, P, because it's in the watt. Kilo, of course, it means 1,000, right? Kilo is 1,000. And unity power factor. Unity power factor, it means the cosine phi equals to 1 or the phi equals to 0. And this is normal for the heating. Heating, usually they use R, resistance. And for the resistance, as we said, the voltage and the current in phase, and there is no angle between them. So the, it's unity power factor. Okay. The second power or the second load, it's motor induction, 25 horsepower. Horsepower, you need to convert it to what? One horsepower, it's equals to 746 watt. So given the P, another thing is the power factor again. So this is similar to the one, the, the first one, right? It's important to say lagging or leading, by the way, if they are, you know, giving the Q or the V, usually they say it's lagging or they must say it's lagging or leading. Here. We have the magnitude of the S because it's in kilo volt amps. So magnitude of the S, as I said, S is a complex number. So you have a number, so it's just magnitude. And they are giving the reactive power, the Q. If something is missing, because one of the exams, they said it's a heating and they didn't say unity power factor. So you can assume that it's a unity power factor, for example. This is like one of the tricks in the exam. How can, if, if like the, let's say, uh, or start by, if the P and cosine phi is given, how can we calculate the Q and S magnitude? So S equals to P over cosine phi. Remember the power triangle. So you have the P, you have the Q and you have the magnitude of the S and you have the angle. So you can use the trigonometric um, uh, functions here. Cosine phi equals the P over magnitude of S. So you can calculate it from here. If you want to get the Q, you can get the Q because you have the angle and you have the power. So P over Q or Q equals to P 10 of the phi. Okay. You don't have the phi, but I can calculate the 
P, it's the cosine inverse of the power factor. Or R cosine of the power factor. We have the power factor. So you can calculate the, the Q. Because it's lagging, it means positive. If it's leading, then you will put negative. The sign is very important for the Q. That's the reason they must say it's lagging or leading. The Q and the power factor. Similar to, to this, if you want to get the, for example, you have the S magnitude and the Q. Can I get the P? Yes. From the right angle, triangle here. P equals to square roots of the S squared minus Q squared. That's it. You have the Q, you have the S. Let's say the S magnitude again. You can calculate the active power. Why I'm doing this? Like why at the end, what I need from this, like my technique to solve this kind of questions, I get the active power for the three loads, A, B, and C. Okay. I get the active power of A, B, and C. Of course, make it uh, positive or negative or because of lagging or leading or zero if it's unity. Okay. One, I get, I try to get the total power and total reactive power. If I want to the S total, total of course power is just as the submission. Total reactive power is just the submission of the reactive power. Then if I want to the S, for example, total, it's the square root of the P squared plus Q squared. If you want the current, let's say magnitude of the current, uh, I know the S magnitude equals to the square root three, the voltage times the current in line line to line and the line to line voltage, for example, given here. So you can calculate the current. I mean, as long as you have like this technique, you have everything in the, for the, for this problem. Okay. Then you can look what they need. Usually if you have the two watt meters, so they need the readings for the watt meters. And they ask another question, what if we did something? So what is the reading again, for example? Okay. So after I finish this, I check exactly what is the they need. I want to show you the, the sorry, the problem itself so you can, yes. The first point, for example, they are asking about the two watt meters. We have two watt meters and they're asking about the reading, get the power or the reading for the two watt meters. So to get, to get the reading, we have to know exactly the uh, what each watt meter is measuring. The first one is measuring the current in the phase A. Second one, the current in phase B. Uh, the second voltage for the, or the voltage for the watt meter, uh, one is VAC, for two is VBC. So the power for the watt meter, or the, let's say the watt meter one, measuring the power one, which is the VAC, okay. I as a magnitude, of course, and I A as a magnitude, and then cosine the angle between them. Minus the angle of the I A. If you want to the watt meter two, it's the uh, similar to the watt meter. Uh, it's let's say P two. It's the voltage of B C and I B cosine the angle between them, right? V B C and I B. The current, if you remember, I, I already calculated the current. The voltage magnitude is given, the voltage line to line given, okay? The, the current magnitude, I already got it. So how can we calculate the angle 
this is the main thing actually for the wattmeters. Measuring the angle is a tricky, but I will show you like a document that I uploaded already on our um, website to make it much easier. So I will give you like the main one, the main technique. So you have the voltage here, A, B, and C. You have the current, let's say, assume the current is here, I, A, and this is the angle of I, A. It's multiplied by V, A, C, A minus C. Where is C? This is, let's say, this is minus V, C. Put it in parallel there, so it's minus V, C. And this is the voltage VAC. And you have an angle here. VAC. So the angle between them, it's this one. Okay. I know that this one is already known. It's a 30 degrees. If you remember from the star and uh, or the Y, the angle between the line and the phase is always 30. So what is the angle of the current IA? It depends on the values that uh, the loading or loads. So how can I calculate this? If you remember, I already uh, calculated the S total and P total and Q total, the summation for all the powers. So what is the angle between, because the angle this, this angle is the angle between the, the volt VA and IA. Because VA, I assume that it's a zero. It's the reference. It's the, um, the main one that we are measuring everything from it. So can I get the calculate the angle total, of course, total. If you have the P total and Q total, that's completely e easy because you have the always keep this one with you like the p q and this is the angle so the q is 10 inverse q total over the p total for example you have this angle this is actually the angle for the current it's the the angle between va and ia but it i va is zero so it's the angle for ia this angle will be negative if it's lagging and positive if it's leading. Sorry, positive if it's lagging, negative if it's leading. Maybe I, I switch it, uh, two things. Similar to this, you will do the same for the second watt meter. How can I check in the exam that I did uh, correct or I got the correct answer. If the watt meter one reading plus watt meter two equals two, if you add both of them equals two, the total power. So we have some kind of methods because it's a lot of calculations, right? So we have kind of methods to check our answers to make sure that it's correct. Do you expect the watt meter one reading equals to watt meter two? It happens only if you have all the loads or resistive loads. If you have inductive or capacitive, they have two different readings. And there is a knowledge question regarding this point. Okay, and uh, we will discuss it later, but it's um, it's a, a good question, actually. I could say it was a tricky question at that time. Okay. So let's um, maybe move to the second point. After we got the readings, I will show you the answers for this. It's already uh, on the website, but I, I will go through it. Uh, B is, um, they said something about it's uh, the low power factor, if you remember. And there now, let me clear this, sorry. 
and they make some changes in the power factor by adding a capacitor. So they added a capacitor here, let's say three phases cap capacitors, and they ask it you to get the values for the capacitors. Right to increase the. Do you want to do, to have like a unity power factor? What is the the var per phase var? It's the unit for the Q for the capacitors. Okay, we calculated. If you remember the Q total here, you want unity power factor. Unity power factor. It means the Q from the source equals to zero all the P equals to the magnitude of the S total. No Q from the source. The capacitors here are going to supply the, the reactive power for all the loads. So you calculated that the total reactive power, it's the total for the capacitor. If you want to get it per phase, then you divide this by three, you will get the one capacitor per phase because we have three capacitors, right? Each phase. And then you have to go through all the steps again to measure the readings for the two watt meters. Not the total because, you know, if you remember the P total is the same. What you, what it changed is actually the Q. The Q total now is given, it's zero. If you have the P total, you can calculate the S, you can calculate, calculate, calculate the angle, you can cal calculate the current, and you can go through the same equations for the two watt meters. Here you have a unity power factor, you will find the two watt meters have the same readings. Half each of them is half of the P total. Because if you add watt meter one plus watt meter two, it should be give it should give all the power total. So, and they are equal, so it's half of the power total. Okay. Let me show you the, the steps uh, because I know it's um, tricky, but you can see like here, I, I put like, try to explain everything, put the steps as, as we, and this is like my, uh, for all kinds of solutions, you will find this. So we have the P power factor for the load A, load B, and C. We have the S and Q. I put S, uh, sorry, QC uh, positive because it's lagging or lag power factor. What meter two, what meter uh, one readings. What I did, I got the power for all total. I got the reactive power total, okay? Um, I got the S total, the current total, um, and uh, the angle. And this angle is the angle for the current. And then I use the phasor diagram. If you remember, it's a 30 minus the phi, uh, phi total. It's the angle between uh, IA and VAC. I got the first watt meter reading. Second watt meter reading, it's exactly similar, okay? But I, I'll use V between VB and VBC. So it's here. Can you see it? VB and VBC. And then I got the reading that the two different, like the readings are different, right? As expected. The check is to make sure the two watt, watt meter readings submission equals to the total power. Because my diagram, the phasor diagram was not clear. So I put it here to show you the uh, difference between what meter one was between IA and VAC, what meter two is between VBC and IB. Okay, it's a 30 plus the angle. This one was 30 minus the angle. Okay, what they did, we want to unity power factor. So I put a capacitor to exactly equal to Q total per phase divided by three. What are the readings before and after? I put some explanation here about uh, the um, after and before and after. And we will we, it will have the same active power 
However, the watt meter readings will not be the same. It will change. And the reason, even if you have the same power, the same active power, they are going to change because the power factory change, right? The angle change. You get the watt meters, they have equal values. Check, multiply one of them by two, it will give you the total power. So like 100% now, you, even before you go from the exam, you know that you solved this problem to the 100%. One thing that I included also on the website to solve the um, two watt meter method, because I know it's um, from the steps of the problem, I had through the years complaints about, okay, the phasor diagram, sometimes because we do, we do it fast, we have some mistakes. So I tried to make another nice method for the two watt meter method. For the calculation of the voltage and the current, that's okay, but we don't know the cosine of the angle. We don't know how to get the cosine of the angle. Okay. So we have one node. We have something called the positive sequence. Okay. Positive sequence, it means we go A, B, C, A, and uh, B, C, A, B, C. This is the positive sequence. A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. Negative sequence, you can do it if you swap between like the C and an A. So like A, C, B, and then E, C, B, and so on. Why I'm using the positive and the neg negative sequence? If you have a positive sequence, V, for example, AB, BC, or CA, you will have the angle with is 30 plus the phi. Remember the phi total. If you have negative, for example, V, AC or CB or BA, you will have a negative sign. So I put all kind of combinations here. If you see between IA, so it's it could be like I, IAB or IAC. So with this, because it's a positive sequence, we will put positive, negative sequence, we will put negative. And this one is correct for all, um, you know, conditions. I put all kind of conditions, right? The angle itself can be positive if it's a lagging power factor. The angle itself can be negative if it's leading or if it's a zero, it will be, uh, uh, if it's unity power factor, so it will be zero. And this is the reason in case you have a unity power factor, the angle is zero. So you have two zeros. So what will happen? It will be cosine 30, cosine 30, the same voltage, the same current magnitudes. So that's the reason you have the same reading for both watt meters. In case, in just one case, it's a unity power factor. Okay. So I uploaded this one just to make it, try to make it easier for you for the exam. If you are under, you know, uh, uh, limited time, so not to have a mistake. So I put this one. I tried to put this example. I already solved this problem. You will find it as a solved problem. So it's um, the calculations here. It's like for uh, the two watt meters. As I said, you will find by the way, because you have two watt meters, one will be mine but with a negative sign, one with the with the positive uh, sign. So it should be one and one, one in the positive sequence, one in the negative sequence, and so on. And then you calculate, you get, you will get the total power. Okay, and instead of using the phasor diagram, because sometimes in the it will be difficult to draw this phasor. Okay, just to make it uh, easier. Any question so far? We finished uh, module four. We had, as I promised, the question from the past exam. Just one question. 
we can start a transformer. We can um, because I uh, missed the break. We can have a very short break, maybe like five minutes, and then we return to take a very small part of the transformers, very small part, and or maybe we can go through the assignment. Sorry, the assignment to one. Just the first couple of questions. Uh, I already uploaded the assignment, but uh, I will give you sh sh some hints uh, for the assignment. Okay. And maybe we can we can keep that transformer to be one time for the next time. Yeah. Okay. Maybe a short break, five minutes, and we come back. Recording and um, solve the, um, or you know, try to go through the assignment number one. So for the assignments, as I said before, like it's it's um, the target is not to test you, but to make you practice the um, some of the previous exams. So assignment number one, three questions. Uh, first one is. Obviously, three phase and power question. We solve it one, but we are going to uh, go through this one too. Second one is the magnetic circuit. Third one, we are going to do it uh, next time with the transformer. Okay. So for the first one, it's you have a circuit. Okay. Of course, this, this is one of the previous exam problems uh, for this circuit. So they have um, two induction motors, one heater. As I said before, heating uh, system heater, uh, usually the power factor is unity power factor. Uh, they put all the data here, and you can see they, they provide it two things, right? Remember from the four things, the active power, PT, reactive power, QT or Q, and the magnitude of the S and the angle. So they provided two things for each. And they have, um, okay, the, of course they said something, assumption that you can use with all the three phase problems. You can uh, write it down in your, uh, uh, you know, and during the exam, just at the beginning of the problem, that you make this assumption that all the the power and the phase that it's a three phase and the loads are a three phase um, balanced system. Okay. They ask it about the four watt meter. Oh, sorry, four ammeters. Uh, so we have four ammeters here to measure the current, only the current. A one. A2, A3, and A4, okay. Uh, then they ask it about something about um, the energy, total energy. So to calculate the energy, you have to get the, the PT at the beginning. Then they ask it about the overall power factor, which is phi T, right? The angle or cosine phi T. And then they said if one of the induction motor replaced by a synchronous instead of lagging, now it's leading with a certain power factor. What is the change for the energy cost and the overall power factor? Okay. If you change it something to something else, one induction motor to synchronous motors. Uh, okay. So for this problem, I'm going to use my technique, this kind of um, similar to what I did uh, in the first one. I have um, for this one, actually they, they are, they use the sim similar uh, inputs. So all they have the active power and the cosine of the angle. Okay, one, two, and three. Of course, if you have kilo, so it's 1000. This one, it means 12,000 watt. Unity power factor, it means cosine phi for this one, for this load is equals to zero. For this one, it's lagging 0.6, okay? And this one is lagging 
uh, 0.72 horsepower, as I said before, 746 of watts. You have to multiply them. We only use the, for the, the power, we use watt. One important thing here, because it was a, in a previous exam, if they provided the efficiency for the machine, okay, we are going to discuss one, this in, in details in, during the machines, but for the three-phase power, I'm, I will just give you like a hint now. Let's say they said the efficiency is 80 uh, or 90% or something. So what, what we are going to do, we are going to divide the 15 by eta or the efficiency, and this will be the power that you are going to use in the three-phase circuit. So what is this and what is the efficiency of the machine? So efficiency of the machine is the output power, output over the input power. Any machine, they have some kind of losses and the efficiency is not 100%. So because you have, let's say 2% losses, so it's your efficiency is 98%. When you have a motor, especially the induction motors, which is very common, they, define, they are defined by the output power. So what they give is the output power. For example, they say 15 horsepower, this is the output power. What they are taking from the supply is the input power because it's electric motor. So the input is electrical power. Output is something in mechanical. And usually what is defined, what is the given in the nameplate of the motor is this sun. So we divide the P out over eta. So P out over eta, the one is given divided by the efficiency to get the input power, which is the one from the supply, the source. Okay. Here they didn't provide eta, so we or the efficiency. We are going to assume okay, it's a hundred percent. It's very efficient. Neglect the losses. Why we when we buy a motor, it's defined by the output power, because when you go and you want to, for example, induction motor, you want it for to rotate something mechanical. You know. The mechanical, for example, needs, uh, let's say, 15 horsepower. So when you go there, you don't care about what is going to, or how much power they are going to absorb from the input, from the supply, from the electric source, but you care more about how, you know, much they can move. Because I know our load, like my load, my load is 15 horsepower. So I need the motor. So this is the reason the electric motors are defined by their output power, not the input, not what they are going to absorb from the circuit or the grid or whatever, but what they are or what they can do, what they can move. Okay. Okay. So for this problem, we have the P total equals to P1 plus P2 plus P3, okay? You can get Q total, yes, for each one because we have the P and cosine, P and cosine, P and cosine. For example, Q here is zero, of course, because it's a heater, but for both induction motors are Q uh, of one, for example, in the first load equals the P10 inverse of the Cosine, uh, sorry, 10 of the cosine inverse for the power factor. Remember the power triangle, this is P, this is Q, and this is the angle. So the angle, 10 of this angle equals to Q over P. 10 Q over P. So Q equals P times the 10. I don't have the angle. I have the cosine of the angle. That's the reason I, I took cosine inverse of the power factor to get the angle, okay? And you can do it here, similar to this, and you can get the Q total. And you can get the S total. 
magnitude, of course, square root of P total squared plus Q total squared. Okay. Have this. Then it's done, right? You can get the current. Current, it's S magnitude square root three, the voltage line line, we have it here, times the current. So you can calculate the current total. You can, cal you can calculate the phi total because you have the P total, you have the Q total. So phi total is 10 inverse uh, Q over P, total total. You want the overall power factor, so it's a cosine of this uh, angle. Okay. For the induction motors, we will study the induction motors later. It's always lagging. It's always absorbing reactive power. Okay. So you will find that this reactive power here, as they said, or the power factor, it's a bad or low power factor. Okay. And we can check the what they are asking for here. They ask it, for example, the first one is the four watt meters. Sorry, the so for four watt meters, we already calculated the total current, right? The total current. This one, this emitter. The current here is actually the current total because it has all the loads. The meter two can see only two loads. Meter three, it's only can see this load. This one is this, this one both, this one all the three, which we got, right? So this is the I total, okay? The second one, you can calculate, we already calculated the P2 and uh, P3 and uh, Q2 and Q3, right? Which is zero, but yeah. So can we calculate the current for both of them? Because if you calculate the current for both, both of them, this is the second meter. Get the P2, 3, Q2 and 3, the submission. And we have the voltage V. Uh, this is the voltage for all of them because they are all in parallel. We have the voltage line, so you can calculate the current. Okay. How can we calculate the current? So you have the P, you have the Q. I can get, for example, the S square root of the P squared plus Q squared. You have the S, it's equal to square root three times the current magnitude times the voltage, which is always the voltage line is 440. So you can calculate the current. I can call it 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, because it's it. You can do the same for this one only because you have the power and the Q. You can calculate the current for this meter. What is the current here? This is the what we call it. It's the neutral. It's not phase A, not phase B, not phase C. It's the neutral. And we assume, as they said here, we have a balanced system. In a balanced system, the neutral current is zero. It's a four wire system, yes, but it's a balanced. So the current in the neutral is zero. So you can ignore, uh, or you can say the current in uh, four is zero. For the B, they are asking for the energy because we have the total power, then it's done. P total times this this money, per, because this is cents per kilowatt hour, the load is 24 hours. So I will multiply it down 24 times this, times the money, times the P total, will give you the total power you are going to pay every day this is the daily 
energy costs because I multiply by 24 hours per day. 24 times the money times the kilowatt, the P total. It will give you the total daily energy costs. What is the overall power factor? The overall power factor is cosine phi total. If you change it something like the induction motor to another synchronous motor, then you have to, you know, change two to the same values here. They said it's the same power, but the leading power factory. So make sure the Q now is negative 0.8. But when you get the Q, the Q for this one will be negative because it's leading. Um, sorry, Mohammed. Um, how do you actually calculate? Yes, please go on. How do, uh, sorry, what, what uh, how do you calculate overall power factor for the circuit, you say? Oh, the, 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 this one, the, the overall power factor? Yes. Yeah, the overall power factor. So we had, um, we calculated the, the phi total, right? How, how we got the phi total? Because we first we calculated the P total and Q total. Okay. Once you have the P total and Q total, this is P total and Q total. And this is the phi total. So phi here is 10 inverse of Q over uh, P. 10 inverse will give you the angle. Here they are asking about the power factor, not the power factor angle. So we have to take cosine of this, the phi total. This is the overall power factor. Yeah, okay, All right. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So the last one is they asked about uh, same like steps and then they ask it one one thing that is not going to change is the new daily energy costs because we didn't change the active power we didn't it's exactly the p total right you change it something the induction motor by synchronous motor but it's still the same active power absorb it so you will have the same daily uh, cost. However, of course, the overall power factor is going to change because now you have the Q negative and it depends on your power factor. It's leading now. Let me quickly show you the, the steps because I, I said that it's, um, the target now is not to, you know, like uh, test you, but to show you the steps so you can, you can, um, this is the answers actually for the assignment here. Okay. Uh, step one. So I got the loads P and Q, P and Q, P and Q for each of the loads. Get the P total, Q total, S total. Okay. And you can calculate the current total. Current total is the one for the emitter one. Okay. Then I added the two and three to get only the current for the ammeters that is getting the two and three loads, I believe ammeter two. So I got S total and then I calculated the I total reading for, so our I two three. Okay, so this is the reading for the ammeter two. For the three, it was just for one load. So I, I got it as um, I three. Four, because it's a balanced load, okay? So the submission equals to zero. I made another kind of like solutions using the phasers, but this is another solutions. It's, it shows that this one is much easier, but it depends on which one you like. So total current is the submission between I1, I2, I3. I got the, the, the current for each one, for each load, separately so this is the one the first two, the the heater i knew that that's the heater because it's the angle is zero can you see this is the i3 then this is i2 and this is i1 i2 it's the one for the motor the induction motor two i1 for the induction motor one i added them i got the same one for the meter one 
Then I added two and three, two and three here. I got the meter number two, okay? And of course, it's three, if you want to three only. So three is the three only, like is this one. This is the meter number three. Meter number four, reading is zero. Okay, this is the overall current, uh, sorry, angle, by the way. After you got the current total, this is the to the overall angle. Can you see it's a negative sign because it's lagging? It's always lagging because uh, at least for the case, you have two inductions because you have two inductions lagging and the one heater, which is uh, neutral, zero, uh, power factor. Power factor is unity, I mean, like zero angle. So the total will be lagging, right? Then I total energy power times time times the money. And this is uh, in cents per day. If you wanted to make it, uh, you know, by dollar, you have to divide by a hundred, right? Overall power, it's P over S total or the cosine of the angle. Positive because it's lagging. You have the same load, but you put like negative uh, leading 0.8. Energy cost will not be affected because it depends on the active power, the P total, which is the same. New uh, power factor will be, surprisingly, you will find it. it's very close to the unity, unity power factor 0.999 so after you put the synchronous actually the synchronous because it's leading if you look at the problem again because now this one is it will turn to be a synchronous it will give all the reactive power for the other induction the synchronous will give to the induction motor number one and this one is unity so it will be like this unity power factor as the overall and yes that that's it for the first problem in our assignment. So any question or we can go in the last uh, maybe like 10 minutes on problem number two in the assignment. Okay, no, no question. I can start the magnetic circuit problem, the like problem number two. So you have, this is, uh, this is the problem. We have the BH curve, okay, the flux tenacity against the field intensity and per turns. And you have the, all the dimensions, including the thickness here. If you want, you see it's five centimeters. You can have a look at the dimensions. Okay, all the, uh, here, the leg here is six centimeter, six centimeter. This one is six centimeter. This one is six centimeter. This one is 10, okay, centimeter. This is 20, 20. I see that there is a symmetry between the two parts here. So this is the kind of things that you, once you see the core, you try to, to see the symmetry as we saw before. We solved it one after the magnetic circuit, if you remember. Okay, so for this one, they are asking, okay, have the core of a magnetic circuit given in, and they, uh, they have the uh, a certain cord, cold rolled steel, kind of steel. So, and this one is the BH curve for this, for the same material. Uh, depth is uniform, five centimeters. It's already here, the depth for the core. And BH curve is given, and they provided some assumptions that actually you can write in any kind of problems in the exam for the magnetic circuits, unless they said something different. For example, the the neglect the um, uh, leakage flux. For example, leakage it means all the flux. We are going to assume that they are going to like flow inside the core. And the fringing effect for the air gap is neglected. So the area of the air gap will be the same. It's not, there is no larger effective area as we said in the last, in the magnetic circuit problems. Okay. You can write down this in any of your um, 
as long as they didn't mention, so you can write down the assumptions, similar to what we did for the assumptions for the ski fees. We assume that they are balanced, so you can assume that there is no leakage flux and fringing effect for the air gap. They said, okay, calculate the value for the current AB to produce a certain flux in the air gap. This is the air gap, and we need to have like a, a certain flux here, phi, flux phi. And they said, uh, of course, like CD, uh, we can neglect at the point A. CD is just meant to for point B. So ignore this coil. That's the reason they make it, they made it like uh, dotted or uh, uh, so it's like for point A, it's not there. Okay, you can completely ignore this during the point A. So first step, we will draw the uh, magnetic circuit. So for magnetic circuit, I have the flux will flow. How, how like the flux? Let's see first the direction of the flux using the right-hand rule. This is the current. Put your four fingers of your right hand on the direction of the current, as you can see you will find your thumb is the direction of the flux. So I know that the flux is going this direction. And then it will go split here into two, return it back. And similar, it will be like this. Between this point or these two points, they see one, actually the same, uh, you know, dimension for all of the three legs here. So I will put like one reluctance here, R. Here, you will see part iron, part air gap, and coil or a source. So I will put two, three things. One is reluctance for the, I can call it like middle leg. This one, I call, I call it like the left. All right, and the middle, for example. This is RL. This is RM for the middle, the, the part of the iron in the middle. This one is for the air gap. Reluctance for the air gap. I, I usually call it G. And uh, a source. I know that the positive in, in up because, because of my right-hand rule. And then I connect this to here. The other one is actually exactly similar to the one on the left, right? Same dimension, same everything. Actually, they are equal. There is a symmetry here. If you put here, if you put like a line here, this side is similar to this. So it's like reluctance for R equals to the reluctance for the left, the right equals to the left reluctances. Okay. They are asking for, we know the flux here, it's given. They are asking for the current I. We have the number of turns, but they are asking for the currents. I know that this flux is going to split equally because of the symmetry between these two. Okay. So how can we solve this uh, circuit? The first thing I usually start with is the air gap. If we have air gap, because usually the air gap, I uh, can get the MMF or the air gap immediately just for a G for the air gap. It's the um, phi, which is given times the reluctance for the air gap. As long as the phi of the air gap is given, I usually start with. So phi times length of the air gap over the mu naught times the area of the air gap. We have everything. The length of the air gap is one millimeter. You have to multiply by 10 to the power minus three because we only use meters. Cross section area, I know that it's 10 times five, right? This is five and this here is five and 10. So 10 times five in centimeters squared. So I multiply by 10 to the power minus four because it's a squared. 
mu naught, you should know the number 4 pi times 10 to the power minus 7. So flux given in the problem. So you can get the MMF. MMF here, because the I, I can say the current, it's the flux, but it's, you know, analogy with the circuit. So I can say current entering here. So here is positive, here is negative. Okay, so I know the MMF here. What I need, I need the current here, or I need the MMF for the source. So you can make a KVL here. I already, so the MMF of this source, let's, let's call it like S, the source, S here, equals to the MMF of the air gap, this one, plus the MMF for the M, let's call it M because of the middle, plus the MMF of whatever you want, because we are doing KVL here, we can say MMF of the right or the MMF of the left, because it doesn't matter, It's they are exactly the same. I got the first one, and this one equals to n times current. Number of turns given. So if I can calculate this, I can get the current. I have the MMF for the, the air gap. It's done here. What is the MMF for the iron parts? This and this. We said as long as the BH curve is given, the MMF for the iron equals to, BH curve is given, it's H times the length L. Whatever, if you want to know, like if you, if you have the middle, so it's the middle and the middle. If you have the left, 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 right, right. Lens, it's not a problem. Lens is actually the, if you remember the mean lens, we get it from this point, this plus this. This is important to know how to get the lens. Okay, this one is then in the middle. So you three centimeter here, three centimeter here. And in this one is in the middle, three and three here. And in the 10, so it's, it will be five and five. So make sure that you are doing it uh, like uh, the lens as a, in a, a correct like way. How to get the H? For the H, you have BH curve. So you try to think about the B. As long as you have the B, you can get the H from the curve, the BH curve. Can I have something related or do I have something related to the B? Yes, I have the flux. I need to get the flux density. Let's do it first at the middle because it's the same flux as the air gap. So the flux in the middle, equals to the flux of the air gap, equals to the, it's given. If I divide it by the cross-section area, which is 10 times five centimeters squared, I can get the B in the middle and use it pH curve to get the H in the middle and put it here. You got the MMF at the middle. Can I do exactly the same way with the left? But uh, after you divide the flux phi by two, it's the same flux like this, divided by two, and then divided by the cross-section area. By the way, the, the cross-section area here is different. So it's a six times five, not like this, 10 times five. Okay, so, don't say they have the same B over two. No, it's not B over two, it's a phi over two. And then divide by the cross-section area that you are using. Because some problems you can use the, uh, you can say actually B here is divided into two if they have the same cross-section area. But if not, like our case, don't use phi. Uh, sorry, don't use B, the flux tendency, use phi. Use the original, use the current not the current density or the flux density. You have the phi divided by the cross-section area. You get the B left or right, and then you put it here. You calculate the MMF. And that's it, calculate the current. Okay. I guess this one is uh, at least point A. 
is very, very similar to what we did in the um, other exam problem that we solved it for the uh, last time. The trick actually in point B, this is something about, uh, so first, like, do you have any question for point A so far in this problem? Okay, if, if there's no problem, I'm going to jump to B. So for B, they said, okay, we have um, this, um, what you can call, like it's another coil, another source for the magnetic field, okay? And the current will flow so that there is a something here is to... Uh, make the air gap flux zero. So the flux here, because all they are all in series, right? The flux here equals to zero. I know that the flux direction before was something like this, right? And the source was positive or plus minus in this direction. They said, we are going to put a current here, okay? So that the flux in the middle rig equals to zero. What do you expect the direction? I will give you the direction I will, and I will tell you the reason. The, the, the direction should be in this direction because it will fight this one. So you will have another one here and it will fight to make it zero. If you put it, let's say, if you put it in the, in the opposite direction, it will be actually helping the current it will give it will go this direction it will help but no you want it the opposite direction right so first I, i'm going to choose this not this this is going to support this one is opposite to the one in the middle okay so the current will be in out so the positive up negative down. Okay. And they said they have this N and they are asking for the current. The trick of this problem is we can draw, of course, the same um, circuit. It's exactly the same circuit, except in the right, I will put another source. Okay, this is CD now, this is AB. I have everything for AB from point A. Okay, for CD, for CD, I, I want to get the current. No flux here, flux equals to zero. All the flux of flowing will go this way from the source, from the source CD. How? How can you solve this? It's a tricky question. You can you can assume that the flux is the current, right? And no current here. So no voltage drop here, no MMF. I'm calling it voltage drop, but it's MMF. But it's still this source, it has a magnetic MMF or, or a voltage, let's say. And it's connected in parallel with this reluctance. So this reluctance will see the same voltage as the source. If you make a KVL here, no flux here, no voltage drop or no MMF, no voltage drop at the uh, air gap or the uh, middle uh, reluctance. So the, the MMF here, equals to the MMF of the source. Okay. Then, very important, the, the flux, it's the same flux here, flowing from this reluctance, not going here, no, all of them going through the same reluctance. So you will find that this one also will be the same MMF of the source A, B. This one is MMF of the source AB. 
because it's only one current flowing same resistance, let's say, and going all the way to the same resistance. We said the resistance at the right equals to the or reluctance of the right equals to the reluctance of the left. So it's the same flux, same current here and this. So the voltage will be the same. If you make a KVL for the all of the circuit, you will find out that this source is actually KVL, is actually this plus this, or the MMF of the CD will be two times the MMF of the AB. This one, you got it from the point A multiplied by two, you can get the current for the CD. I know like point B is tricky, tricky to solve as a circuit, not, not as a magnetic circuit problem, but as a circuit analysis. It's uh, put the flux in the middle leg equals to zero or something, it's something like new. And let me show like the steps uh, and let me know if you have any question. So for example, this one, uh, the first part, it's, it's uh, I call it here, here outer leg and middle leg or left and right because they are equal. So I call them outer. V times reluctance for the iron part, it's H times L. And I got the values here. I said you can, in the middle leg, you can neglect actually the one millimeter from the uh, air gap because it's neglected. It's very, very small. It's not going to, to impact your uh, results or solution. Get the reluctance for the air gap. Divide the flux here by two. Okay. Get the current. Then at the end, you have a flux here equals to zero. All the flux will flow here. So this is the one, no, no flux here. So this voltage will be here. And you have the same flux times the reluctance. It's the MMF and same reluct reluctance and same flux. So they are two. If you make KVL, they are two equals to the, this one. I tried to write uh, more um, explanation here, but at the end, you will get this current. Direction of the current is entering at the C. We actually, if you look at this, they are asking about the direction of the current too for the second coil. So the right-hand rule and everything. Uh, any question so far? I'm, I'm done for today. Next time, we will uh, hopefully finish the um, transformers and check the answer for uh, the transformer for uh, uh, transformer question in assignment number one. Okay. Thanks for the... Uh explanation of the questions. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, one, one question, please. This assignment, we, yes, should, please. Yeah, go ahead. we should solve that and uh, take photos and send to you or a scanner. How, how we should proceed with the, the assignments? Yes, so uh, we have actually like uh, up to two, two more weeks. Within the two weeks, you can start, of course, uh, uh, solve course, you will do it on a paper. You can um, take photos or a scanner or scan your your uh, uh, your uh, solutions and email it to me. This is uh, the best the best uh, way to to upload it to me through my email, like the the one that I included in my first uh, in the announcement. I can send it uh, again if you don't have it. It's in the um, also it's in the in the first module, module number one. You can take try to make sure that the um, photo is clear and all the answers are shown, not like part is cut from the the photo. But try to make it like um, as clear as possible. Uh, of course, if you have a scanner or like uh, the app that is doing a scan, it will be much uh, better. 
but if not, like normal photos are okay too. Okay. You still have okay. two weeks. So we will, we will actually meet two times before the deadline. Yani, I mean, like next week we have a, a, a meeting and the week after we have another meeting. And then after the second meeting in up to the midnight, you can upload your solution. So because because we even we haven't finished the explanation for the assignment last problem, the transformer one. So we'll take the transformer next time and this question. And then we are going to, uh, you will have another week actually to finish everything and email it to me. Okay, understood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, feel free to email me anytime. You don't have to wait uh, for you know our meeting if you have any question. Like it's uh, and they put like the discussion like uh, under the discussion the the part for the question. So if, let's say if you have any trial or anything, you can upload uh, there and they can check for yeah for for you and it will be you know easy for everyone to check. And keep it actually like as a, you know, our bank of questions and answers. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. And yeah. And see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.